Ooh. Bonus. Ooh. A special initiative oh. during the first 24 hours of Prism Sale, participants will receive a 10x engagement score boost for any route spent to purchase Prism vouchers. The more vouchers you purchase, the greater your engagement score. For the duration of the sale, each Prism voucher purchased will reward a base 10 engagement score. Holy shit. So you're getting a hundred engagement score in the first twenty four hours? Holy Boom. Yes, it seems like that. But what means fair value? If a whale buys in the first five minutes everything, is the supply and the whole thing then stopped? No. Nah. Read, read, read the blog, TCO. <laughs> no, that's why I ask. I don't understand. No, no one gets anything until the sale ends. Yeah, but seven million dollars. Seven million dollars. If, if one hundred thirty-five thousand are bought by seventy dollars in the first day, that's that's read the blog. That's not how it works. That's read the why blog. I ask. I need ninety-four blog. million root to be able to mint it all money. out. Base, base everybody until we read the blog. You you put in how much you want to pay, and then at the end, it as long if it's over the base price, then it's split pro rata to everyone based on how much you put in. Yeah, so I'm right. If somebody, no, you're not right. Theoretically enough for the main just price. PCO, 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 sorry. But we can touch on this later. Maybe best thing you just read the blog first because yeah, it's all absolutely. explained very clearly in there. Awesome. There we go. And uh -huh. with that, um, I will just welcome everybody to 30 Minutes Max. Um, sounds a little bit different from uh, Mo Meta today because he's currently traveling to the Gold Coast for the Ways of Innovation. So unfortunately, you have me uh, as your co-host for this week's 30 Minutes Max. Um, but really excited to get into it. We've had a lot of really good questions um, this week, so I'll pass over to Alex, and then we can get straight into it. How does that sound? Awesome. Thanks, Monty. Um, definitely not unfortunate that we have you here. Always, always good to have you um, chat and join us on on these. Um, yeah, it's been uh, it's <laughs> it's been a crazy few weeks. Um, I feel like I've been saying that you know, every 30 minutes max for a while now. But yeah, this is this has really felt like uh, all the different components are really starting to come together. Um, I hope you guys are all as excited as I am about the Third Kingdom and the upcoming Serial Scapes, Crame and Prisms Mint, um, as you would have seen. And as we we're just discussing, uh, a blog's just gone out, which goes into much more detail around how all of that um, works. I can uh, give a bit of a recap um, just on that as well, which is basically with the fair value sale, um, the way that it works is essentially there's a, a baseline price associated to a prism, um, but if the total amount committed by people um, exceeds the total amount of available prisms based on that price, then it all adjusts to a prorated amount. So what actually happens is at the end of the sale, you don't receive a prism, you receive a prism voucher, and that voucher can um, be a you know a fractional number. Um, so if we exceed the total sale vo volume, um, then those that have put in just the baseline price will actually receive a fraction of a ticket, and those tickets will then be tradable on um, Dexter as well. So it's an interesting novel mechanic that we've uh, implemented to allow for, I guess, a, a fairer distribution um, and to avoid, you know, uh, just whales coming in and buying up the whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. Outside of that, um, it's been really cool to bring... Um, actually, it sound, by the way, it sounds like someone's just on the side of the road there. We're getting it. I think that's you, Monty. Are you on the side of the road? Oh. No, it's Can probably you, my uh, Myself. Okay. Just to remind it, there we go. Yeah, just uh, unless you're talking, um, please mute yourself just to make uh, the audio clear for everyone. Um, yeah, on top of that, I mean, been really cool to see the, you know, us bringing our various partners on board for this one um, and not only starting to open up the respective communities um, um, to each other, we've seen some really good. Um, kind of cross-pollination happening there but it's also been really good in terms of across the entire industry you know even just that image that we had with all of the different collectibles together has has 
made a lot of people kind of take notice across the industry as a whole and all raise their hands of saying, you know, how do we get involved? Um, so yeah, really incredible um, few weeks, going to be a big few weeks to come as well. Mm. Um, and of course, you know, there's been all, all of Aaron's stuff that he's been putting out, um, all hail to the hot dog king. Uh, really cool to see all of the stuff coming out of innovation department and getting closer and closer to actually, um, you know, the, the final kind of product delivery side of things. Um, on another note, uh, I know a lot of you have been asking regularly for some updated info on tokenomics. Um, we hear you. Uh, we are, we will get that info out when we're ready, but just please bear with us on that front. There's no need to keep raising it every single week. Um, also, uh, before we jump into the questions, last thing is that uh, you will have noticed that we pushed out an update to Future Score yesterday. Uh, some of you may have actually noticed a perceived uh, decrease in Future Score as a result, um, just to provide some clarity here. So there was an, uh, an update that was initially pushed last week. Um, but it ended up making some miscalculations on some of the components. For example, um, many party bears were actually being double counted. And so that's why for a lot of you, you it may have seen like there's been a, a decrease since last week. But what's actually happened is if you go back like two weeks before that um, previous one, um, that was, you know, the previous baseline number. And for most of you, you will have actually seen an increase since then because we have now uh, put uh, established the points for TNL gear, uh, bridge seekers, racer, in, racers, NFTs as well. Um, just on that as well. So, um, ex yeah, so excluding last week's update, uh, which caused those errors, you should actually see a slight increase to your score um, if you hold any of those previously mentioned collectibles. And with that, I think we'll jump straight into questions. Righty, awesome, sweet. So um, the first question that I have here um, is wh which within races are NFTs versus SFTs? Um, yeah, so as I just mentioned there, so we've actually implemented the future score points for races NFTs, but the SFTs, semi-fungible tokens, are still being worked on. Um, those are only the steering wheels, seats, and accessories, um, and those, you know, the, it's pretty negligible. All the other stuff is, um, you know, the chassis, the wheels, the engine, etc. All of that are NFTs, and that's the stuff that's just had this future score implemented. Sweet. Awesome. Perfect. Um, next question is, is there any other way for me to catch up on any of the stuff that I've missed um, slash increase my future score before rewards were given out for quest uh, eight? Um, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for um, a simpler way to stay on top of everything that happens, uh, Futureverse News is always a really good source. Um, otherwise, you can check the likes of uh, the weekly recaps from people like Max Poker and uh, NFT Bro. Um, but um, important to note here that uh, Quest rewards, unless otherwise stated, Quest rewards are based on the future score at the time of the Quest closing, not at the time of the Quest being paid out. Sweet. Yeah, we have so many great resources. If you if you can't catch up with everything at once, we've got so many different things, places to look. So that's awesome. Um, next question is: How does Futureverse plan to address IP licensing concerns for non-Futureverse assets used in Futureverse environments? Um, so I think this is a broader um, situation that applies to like the metaverse as a whole. And in our mm. view, it really comes down to the game developer. So whether it's us or a third party, it's to them to determine which assets or collectibles are allowed into their environments. Um, from our perspective, we're taking the approach of, you know, partnering with the actual IP rights holders for the most part. Um, but yeah, when you think of, you know, the metaverse, it is a series of interconnected experiences, but those con uh, connected experiences themselves will likely have rules around which assets, collectibles, avatars, et cetera, are allowed in, and what kind of um, utility, functionality, et cetera, that they have in those specific environments. We're working on some solutions around <clears throat> how we can better facilitate that as well um, through, you know, uh, like a, a metaverse passport sort of thing. 
Awesome. Perfect. All right. Next question is, has the root network or any other components thereof been audited by third parties, e.g. custom, runtime, staking module, bridges, future pass? If so, are those publicly available? If not, can they ma ma be made publicly available? Um, yep, yeah, we've undergone audits across pretty much all components of our work. Um, the relevant audits will be published through our GitHub um, at the appropriate time. Perfect, sweet. Uh, next question, will the quests be more frequent? Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. <laughs> awesome. Um, the math shows we have just under 18% of the rewards left for the community and, rough, and roughly 15 months to go. Is it safe to assume that we can expect a sharp increase in either the multipliers given out as per quest, say five plus quests a month in the near future? Um, well, you know, we have to get all that route out somehow. Um, and it sounds mm. like you've done the math, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Perfect. Another question here. Um, I moved some Futureverse assets to a hardware wallet and didn't have time to also add the new address to my future pass. Can we have a warning before quest, before, before quest rewards to ensure our wallets are up to date? Um, so I guess this first and foremost touches on what I said before and that um, the quest rewards are based on your future score at the time of quest completion not at the time of distribution, um, but also it shouldn't take more than like a minute to, to link a new address to your future pass. It's a pretty straightforward process. Awesome. Don't forget to do that, folks. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, next question is, with scams coming back, could Futureverse start putting this is the last tweet in the thread post out with their comms? Yes, yes, 100% that has been done. Perfect. Easy, easy. See, ask and you shall receive. Uh, next question is, can fluff holders get the Walker World claim? Walker World land claim? Um, land. I'm, I'm not fully across the Walker World land claim, to be honest. Um, I um, will need to have a look into that. But hey, we have a very close partnership with Walker World. Um, so if there is something coming out on that side, then you know it'll be sure to be reciprocated. Um, um, but pretty much all of the Walker World stuff is kind of working a lot more closely on the uh, Readyverse and Third Kingdom side of things. Sweet. All right. Um, somebody just suggested, can we please get a filter under collectibles in Future Pass? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this has been something that's been on the internal roadmap since, well, basically since the launch. Um, we have had other updates that have taken priority, um, a lot of the other recent features, but this is something that we are working on um, and expect to see it um, go live in the coming months. Perfect. Sweet. Now to some silo questions. Um, what is our silo actually doing? Is there any activity happening on the network? Will the silo LP dashboard be staying live and producing rewards too? Um, so... At the moment, um, at this stage, it's more just for us to ensure that it's all functioning properly. Um, this is why we've launched an enclosed beta. Um, we're actually bootstrapping the staking rewards until we get network activity um, up and running um, after some of the, the upcoming updates. Um, cool. In terms of the silo LP dashboard, um, I need to double check on what the plans are for there, but I believe that's going to be um, sunset as everything moves over to the seeker side. Cool. Perfect. Um, another question. Are there any workarounds to unstaking silo and the, on the old dashboard? Can we just port it over to root or something? Uh, unfortunately not. You'll have to unstake and then bridge to TRN and follow that process. Sweet as... Um... Is that noise uh, coming through from your side, Monty, or have we got someone else with a hot mic? No, yes, it's my dog is just yelling at me. Um, <laughs> okay, question okay. is, sorry, he wants to be in 30 minutes next. Um, question is, what did you think about the Sappy Seals world when they went live today? Did you see it? Actually, can you, there's one that you just skipped over there. Um, if you can um, touch on the other one. This one? Are they work on because it's just one yes. up highlighted. Are you reading yeah. it directly off the document? 
Yes, yes, it just says a bunch of questions yes. from Mark Clark on Seeker Side, though. Yep. People can jump into the channel if they want to read them. But the, did you just summarize? Oh. No. So, um, okay. So, anyway, yes. So, there's a bunch of yeah. questions from Mark Clark around Seekers and Silo. If people want to read those, they can jump into the channel, but it's far too extensive for us to read out here, as we've. It, stated many times if you want your questions to be read out directly and answered directly make them succinct don't write us a novel um but yeah so as i kind of touched on there the seekers network um we're still getting up and running um i guess to provide a bit of clarity there uh seekers network isn't like a fully on chain like a standard sort of l2 um it won't have its own block explorer etc um it is a decentralized network that is incentivized using the root network uh, but each node on the Seekers network isn't storing the same data like it would on a blockchain. It's, it's quite complex, um, and, you know, there's obviously still a fair bit to wrap your heads around, but we'll be posting some updated documentation on this soon enough, so stay tuned for those. Perfect. Sweet. All righties. Um, next question is, can you confirm the current quota amount of root available as, this, um, as sends from the cycle? Um, yes, yeah, so it is equivalent to um, the basically um, the ten percent of the total circulating supply of root at the end of the cycle. Um, so I think it will work out to be approximately one percent of the total supply. Right, perfect. All right, now a bit of a cheeky one. Maybe it's because it's coming up to four twenty next month. But has any of the team got any joint fluffs? I don't know if they meant joint fluffs like pairs or joint fluffs as in joints. Yeah, a bit of a random question. Um, I mean, I love yes, on both fronts. Uh, I have <laughs> pairs that have, and I have joint fluffs, and I think I might even have pairs that have uh, pairs of joint fluffs. Um, personally, and I'm sure others in the company do as well. Awesome. Yeah, I've got a dairy. I've got a dairy fluff. One, my my fluff has a ciggy. It's pretty pretty good. Um, all righties. Perfect. Um, next question is, would love to hear more about the patent plans. Wayfinder paper today, talk today, today talking minting agents, training, memories, personalities. I think we're all quite curious if the team have had discussions. Um, I actually wasn't aware of Wayfinder, um, so thanks for sharing that. It actually looks like they are infringing on our patents, um, so I've passed this on to the relevant people internally. Um, if they are infringing on our patents, which it certainly looks like they are from first glance, then they're either going to have to work directly with us or going to have to take a very different strategy. Um, we are, we'll, we'll be making more of our patents public at the appropriate time. Um, a couple of them are already published in the R&D section of the website, um, and there's a lot more that are in various stages. Um, so once we get those a little bit further along, uh, we'll be publishing those as well. Perfect. <clears throat> we as. All right, on to the next question. Uh, what did you think about the Sappy Seals world when it went live today? Did you see it? Uh, honestly, I haven't, uh, haven't had a look at it. <laughs> Been a bit busy on our side. Um, but uh, I'm keen to hear what the community's thoughts are on it, though. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, there's so much coming out, and it's actually, it is actually really cool to finally see a lot of these projects um, actually achieve, you know, what has been promised for many years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I know it does feel like a lifetime ago for many, so, you know, props to mm -hmm. Sappy Seals for, for actually getting um, their world live. Um, but no, I haven't had a chance to have a look, but if anyone wants to give me the lowdown, very interested. Awesome. Yeah, no, it is It is an interesting one because I guess, you know, games don't happen overnight and it takes years to develop things, so it's cool to see some of these projects getting those things out. Uh, anyway, next question is, the, fun the fungible assets runtime states that 1% of each new asset created is distributed to a network node, val to ne to network node validators. Is this currently the case? Um, no, so that specific feature is one of the next planned updates to the runtime um, on that roadmap. It's not just li it's not live currently. Alrighty, easy. All right, this is a this is a good one. Uh, this next question is: Does Aaron McDonald have a middle name? If so, does it start with S, making his initials ASM? 
Uh, he does have a middle name, but it doesn't start with an S, unfortunately. Maybe we can see if he wants to get it legally changed. Um, but I'm sure it has some uh, sentimental value to him. Um, and it starts with a J. Oh, what could it be? I want to hear your theories. Um, yeah, I think Aaron, Aaron State McDonald sounds a bit random, but... <laughs> Alrighty. Um, with TNL, is there a way I can I I can check on chain who my draw was against? Um, I mean, you could probably search the fighter's name and find the wallet owner that way. Um, but the then you just end up with you know a, a wallet address or whatever name alias they've given themselves. Um, mm -hmm. The fight data itself isn't stored on chain, so there's no direct feed there. But as we continue to to update and roll out um, more features in TNL, um, there's certainly you know stuff that we might look into there around you know being able to kind of add friends or you know dig into the the person behind the fighter and that sort of stuff a bit more. Cool, cool. All right, next question is: uh, if my computer can run TNL, does that mean it'll be able to run TTK? So that's the Nilix Legends and the Third Kingdom for those who are just tuning in for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, so we can't confirm this just yet, but I would expect so. Um, the current TNL build um, does need some optimizing. It is it is a bit on the heavier side, and we expect that the Third Kingdom uh, will be less intense. But once again, we can't confirm that outright at this stage. Uh, we will release device specs when we have them ready. Awesome, perfect. Oh, next question. Are Epic building anything for Futureverse? <laughs> you know I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along. <laughs> what is the difference between Roblox 3D AI tooling and Futureverse's? Um, I mean, I haven't explored Roblox tools, to be honest, and uh, I'm honestly not the best person to speak on the intricacies of AI tool development. Um, as far as our AI 3D tooling, we'll publish more info on that when uh, when we're ready. Perfect. Sweet. All right. Um, can the folks that staked a seeker and silo at the start readjust their position slash seeker slash node now that the staking mechanics and options have changed several times? Um, yeah, so this one, um, actually just firstly here, I guess, um, you're not actually staking seekers right now. Your seekers can become nodes in the network once we get out of closed beta. Um, but for now, you're just staking silo to one of the company seeker nodes during this closed beta while we get everything else up and running. Um, if you want to change change your stake, you'll have to go through the process of unstaking and restarting the process. Sweet. Easy. All right, next question. Are there rewards pro rata regardless of your node choice or seeker staked? Uh, I believe so, yes. I think there might be a bit of variability at the moment, but this is the point of us launching in a closed beta like this to make sure we get everything working properly before we roll it out further. Sweet. All right, next question is, have the rewards been increased pro rata for the increase in stake? Okay. Oh. Uh, I can't confirm any additional details in terms of uh, rewards at this stage, but you can do the maths yourself. Sweet. All right, uh, next question is, what will happen with the other 2,222 2, ray guns? Will they still be ray guns? Uh, yeah, the plan is, uh, I believe that we're still looking to release them once we get some more use cases um, in place for ray guns. Awesome, perfect. All right, multi-token gas system. Um, can you talk about, a uh, uh, question, not system, uh, can you talk about how the multi-token gas system introduced last week works? On the back end, is it swapping on Dexter or can it search for the most favorable rate on any root network DEX? And how is the slippage calculated on the back end? Um, so the multi-token gas system um, has actually been live pretty much since the start um, and we've used it in a, very, a few different experiences um, around Mints to date. Um, obviously, the, the recent update and reference there was um, directly for the FuturePass dashboard and implementing it there with a wide range of token options. Um, 
the way that it works is actually we have a a dex palette directly on the root network so when um dexes launch that are using native uh, that are launched natively on the root network like dexter um, they're actually all working off that same palette so the liquidity pools that are being established on dexter would also be the same liquidity pools that are being accessed oh, no, via no, no, no. No, oh. no. sorry hot mic please mute <laughs> um Hang on. Or I'll, or I'll mute you yeah thank you um so the yeah so um the dex palette um basically serves all of the dexes that work um directly off native trn now moai for example doesn't use it because they're working on they're on evm um not using the native dex palette so it's a little bit different but if for example another dex was to pop up on the root network that was uh running on the native dex palette then that would be using the same liquidity pools across dexter and wherever else as well so when for example we use in any token gas system whether it's someone sending something within the dashboard whether it's paying for a mint or whatever it may be um it's going directly into the dex palette and uh, doing the exchange in real time with the baseline um slippage and all that sort of stuff that you have um on the dex palette now what you might see in some cases is that for example um if you chose to pay with you know asto instead of xrp for gas on a transaction um you might actually end up with a little bit of extra xrp back in your wallet afterwards because um because it's kind of a variable one so we will often have a little bit of an extra buffer on there just to make sure that that transaction goes through successfully sweet all righties uh next question is non-fungible labs wrote some code for the kiwi government right or was it or was it a whole blockchain please could you refresh my memory as much as you wish to say or correct around this yes. Uh, we didn't um, directly as non-fungible labs. I think uh, maybe SensNet or Plug or one of the other ones in the centrality ecosystem did at the time, uh, but it mm. certainly wasn't us at non-fungible labs. I know Aaron has done a bit with the government in terms of helping um, set, like, you know, consult, and uh, there is some hearings, I think, um, and a lot of our the work that we've been doing is both originally non-fungible labs, ASM, et cetera, and now as Futureverse, has helped shape some of the policy because, you know, at the time we were having to kind of figure out best practices because there weren't well-established best practices. And then a lot of that actually ended up going back to the government and becoming established best practices. Cool. Sweet. All right, the next question is, have you read Soft War or ever seen Jason Paul Lowry being interviewed? Pretty scary slash bright stuff. Bitcoin equals weapon. Uh, I have not, but I will check it out. Thanks for the suggestions. Mm, yeah, I know that sounds quite interesting. I'm definitely going to have a little Google after this. Um, so next question is quite creative. Uh, so is the Futureverse more like Metaverse Feds or the Metaverse Mafia? Because Mafia might be more interesting, but it's a tightrope either way. Oh, maybe y'all could be the Metaverse Royal Family. Is this what the upcoming Royal announcement is? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I, I, guess, I guess we're more like the Metaverse utilities providers, you know. We're, we're running the plumbing and the electrical and uh, helping build the roads and, you know, putting mm. the tools in place to plug everything together so everyone else can build. Um, I certainly wouldn't yeah. call it the Mafia. <laughs> yeah, that's slightly questionable. But um, <laughs> all right, I'm just um, heading into 30 minutes max and seeing some questions that folks have tagged me in over here. Um, Nat from uh, level 50 here. Now that boroughs and land have been separated, what is the plan for boroughs going forward? Will we be able to put boroughs on our surreal escapes at some point in the future? Uh, I mean, I, I can't discuss all the future utility stuff, but there are plans for boroughs. Um, and how they fit into all the other stuff that we're building. Um, but I can't give any specifics on that at this stage. 
the word. All right. A couple of these questions are questions that folks should maybe read the blog first. That's going to be our new uh, at command and future verse. Read the blog. Um, yeah. But maybe There's should also, we open it? Um, for the reminder as well, for a lot of these product specific ones, we have dedicated FAQ channels in the Ask Us Anything forum. So I'm seeing a lot of questions here around prisms, um, a lot of stuff that we can't answer at this stage. If you have any questions there, best to post them directly in that FAQ channel. Um, that way it's, you know, it's an always on piece of content there that anyone can refer to in real time rather than just kind of um, doing it right now. Yeah, definitely. E Z. That sounds great. Um, should we open the floor up for a couple of questions for anybody in the chat right now? Sure. Sound, sound good? Anybody, if you've got any other cues, feel free to unmute yourself. Yo, Alex. Um, this is Algie. Um, Yo. So I posted a question about sends that was asking about like the allocation that this the team or like that never got distributed is what I should say. Um, I was just wondering what happens. Like, does that get burned over for root? What what allocation are you talking about? Sorry, I don't understand the question. Like, there's a portion of sends that is not distributed. Yeah. So any if you're talking about anything that's within our treasury, um, right. I mean, I can't I can't provide details of what we do with our treasury that's just not something that we ever discuss publicly yeah okay yeah i i mean maybe maybe ask about it but i had some people asking me that basically like what because because a, a good portion of the sends hasn't been converted into root so i don't know but well, I, well, are you took. I mean, no, no sense has been converted. Or, or I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, I said that wrong. I meant a good portion of the sense hasn't been distributed, is what I meant. Isn't it like a billion tokens or something like that? Uh, you don't, you well, don't the know entire circuit, the entire supply of sense is one point two billion. So yeah, and so is isn't it? Isn't enough. it like a majority of it is still in that treasury? Maybe this isn't a good question to ask live, but it, mm. it, it's. It, it got overlooked, it sounds like. I asked about it, but maybe you guys didn't see it because it was like one of the first ones. But it's okay. okay. I can ask again, and then you guys can maybe answer the next time. All right. But what I can tell you for now is that um, we still haven't even hit the full allocated quota for this first cycle. In terms I asked about of this one time, time the and they told me that I asked about this one time, and I forget who answered, but. They told me that um, they aren't going to convert the treasury sends into root. So I don't know if that's still the plan, but. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know who told you that. It, to me, it wouldn't make any sense because we have a dedicated amount that is for of root, which is available from sends burn, and it is equivalent to the total supply of sends. So. There's quite a lot of yeah. this is confusing in the. Discord. What are you, what are you talking about? Sorry. Yeah, Who's but I think that? that's strength and it's good fight. What? Uh, sorry, are you asking a question or are you just talking with our mic? It's not If they say. Oh, it's it's Nicole. No, it's it's she's she's Nicole's explaining it. I think she's on another call. Nah, but. Is she? Oh. No, but it's all good. Like, I, it's not like something I'm concerned about or whatever. I, 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 I figured you guys like would would know right here, but it's it's not a big deal. I think it sounds like you need to make sure you ask about it so you don't say the wrong thing. Yeah. Here we go. All right, is there anybody else that has any other questions before we hit off? We've just come past our 30 minutes maximum. Hey, uh, chicka ricka licka mic chick. Uh, you guys oh, there, there he is. Yeah. Yes, hey. we can. Just want to let you know I'm out of the cab. I've arrived safely in the Gold Coast. I like to say it's the sunny, sunny shine coast here, but it's not. It's raining. It's miserable. But that's okay. 
I wanted to answer a question that was raised regarding does anybody's fluff smoke joints? Uh, I can safely say that both my fluffs, Mo Meta and Flossy, do late nights in the Snoop Dogg studio, um, rolling up another sweet and listening to the beat again. So yes, I can confirm that on both accounts. And, uh, and Monty, thank you for stepping into my shoes at the last minute and um, the show must go on. So great job, mate, really appreciate it. Good show, guys, thank you. Thank you, and hey Mo, what's uh, what's 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 happening over in over in the GC? I hear we have a bit of a bit of a thing that's going on out there. Do you want to give us a good bit you of a update? You don't want to know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you really it's don't not... want to start this. Well, the things that are gonna happen, you're never gonna find out. But the things that are hopefully gonna happen is we all meet up at a bar um, on the Saturday night down um, on the main beach there, a place called um, Yacht Deck. That's our, that's our best spot picked out at the moment, but that could change. At the moment, we're staying pretty flexible on it all. The weather's not great. We'll make it work. Uh, but really looking forward to um, ice coming up. We're going to have uh, the Lord of the Horde, Kyle, up here as well. That's going to be superb. And um, it's just a great venue. It's going to be a really exciting time. So anyone who's coming up to the Wave of Innovation, can't wait to see you. 100%. So, um, yeah, I'm up here. I'm getting organized, but it's pretty a lot of background noise. So I'll just sort of step away from the mic quietly. And of course, anybody, if you've got any more questions, hit Alex up, this is your chance. Alex, how did you come on the min price of 696 root? That's, if I see it right, if somebody calculated right, a valuation of 9.5 million for the prisons, at least. I mean, in your as, as you can t clearly tell, um, the mint price of 696.9, was something that was actually um, done through extensive economic analysis um, and um, accounting projections um, that helped us to land on uh, a figure that is, you know, quite arbitrary and has nothing to do with the culture, of course. Yeah, leaving leaving culture and fun besides because it's money. It's around seventy-five to eighty bucks per thing, mm -hmm. and leaves, for mm -hmm. example, me with a mint if I want to have three prisons per uh, borough or parcel for around mm -hmm. 5,000 bucks value. That's a lot of money asking from holders, even if it's only one with 80 bucks. For a lot of people, yeah, it's well, a lot of money. Uh, so I'm you're, just you're, asking, you're, what is the thought behind it? I'm just going to stop you there. No one's forcing you to buy anything. You don't have to buy all of them as well. Like at that price, it's very reasonable considering if you look at the grand scale of every single other mint that has happened, like this is like far on the lower end of any mint within the industry. And also look at the sheer amount of root tokens that are up for grabs in this first season alone. Now, we've already established that prisms in this first initial mint are premium and we'll have high sets and others. There are increased future score points associated to them, engagement score as well if you... Um, purchase increased engagement score in the first 24 hours um and you know that that 300 and was it 325 or something million root that's that's just for the first season so um like, can you I mean, tell us you can, how long the math. can you tell us how long the first season will be will we see no, our, no, okay will stage. we see our parcels before and will we see the game the surreal, before the, the surreal the game, what we are minting the surreal the, just read the blog pretty much all the information that you need is in there the surreal skate claim uh, the, the surreal skate claim goes out um like at the same time so yeah that's that's all there yeah but it's up to you to do the math on whether you want to purchase this i'm not here to try and convince you or provide you any sort of financial returns the math is all there there very easily to me, it's a no-brainer. It's very cheap for a prism, and the returns, the the potential returns, if you look at the root rewards, are massive. So it's a no-brainer for me. But I'm not here to try and convince you if you don't want to. But it says prism uh, must have game-ready collectibles. Means I can't play the game without prisms. Well, you can't play the Third Kingdom without prisms, but you can play other games with it. Or with without it, you can play. You can play. TNL without prisms. You can play races without prisms. It's up to you if you want to take part or not. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Well, I think that we hello? have. Oh, hello. Is that 
Um, I just had a quick question. I see um, Cool Cats and Dead Fellas sharing their, and Walker World sharing their um, mint allocations. Are we going to see other partners discussing that, or is, or, and also is it going to be like the lab spaces and communications with these other partners in the future? Just wondering yeah, how I mean, that's all. We're so we're we're in constant comms with um, all the relevant parties here. We are looking at potentially doing some some um, unified spaces and that, um, but we're not in charge of how other partners run their comms. Um, that's up to them. And they all, you know, they're all different companies. They run in their own way. Um, so, you know, we need to respect that. If we're coming into this together and we're bringing friends on this journey, they're going to have their ways of doing things, which might not necessarily be the same as the way that we want, uh, the way that we do things. Um, but, you know, the the metaverse is built with friends. Cool. No, that, that makes sense. I'm I'm happy to wait to hear from them. I've just heard some speculation that um you know people think that Pudgy Penguins and Doodles aren't really involved because they're not saying anything. I was just wondering if you're in comms with them so there must be something going on behind the, we, the doors. We, yeah, when we do partnerships, we we do partnerships. Like we don't use the word partnerships willy nilly. We're not Web three cowboys just trying to pull kind of vampire attacks on other communities or anything like that. Like we are literally in regular comms with all of the relevant leadership. We have full sign off to use their assets. We've gone through the entire strategy with them. But what is not our place is to tell them how to run their comms. Perfect. That's all I wanted to hear. Just to. Um, help with that speculation. Thank you. Easy peasy. All right. Any more questions before we head off? No. Awesome. Good as gold. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, today for this week's 30 Minutes Max. 